Okay, it's been a while since I've been back. This is Danny Cage from the World Famous Monster Factors, Danny Cage Show. Uh, it's a Sunday. All these days are running into each other uh, with the COVID, the coronavirus, quarantine, pandemic. I'm not going to get too much into that right now. I'm trying to get a distraction from that. So let's just get right into some uh, some cool stuff now. Let's get into character development in professional wrestling. I like to. I always start these podcasts off by saying uh, we try to keep them to about a half hour. Right now I'm uh, driving. I have the head to go pick up some essentials for the family. And I like to uh, keep these within a half hour so I'm not hijacking you for your time. So jumping right into character development stuff. And then later on I want to deal with pro wrestling. Is it a sport or a TV show? Okay, so let's go into character development. And I look right now and there's really... It's tough right now because they say there's no true heels, no true baby face. And of course, you know, people say things like, oh, MJF is a true heel, this, this, and that. But I mean, like, he's doing everything that is a heel. But uh, what's happening now is everybody's going to start to like him because he's the one being the true heel. Uh, and, And what happens is to be a heel, you also have to have a baby face. And the problem we have no baby faces is because everybody likes the heels because they have these cool backstories and, uh, you know, they do cool things and all that. It's it's really, uh, that's why I think Bray Wyatt's character in the beginning really took off and became so popular is because he had like a very detailed uh, backstory and something you could really grab onto. And uh, sorry for the turn signal and everything, folks. Like I said, I'm driving. I got my wireless headset on. You get, you got these great backstories, and we don't see that for baby faces. And the only baby faces that really catch on, it seems, are ones that used to be a heel, um, and they they fell in love with that heel character, and then they transitioned over to babies. I can't remember the last baby face that came in a baby face. And people really loved and stuck with for the duration. Uh, And if you know, uh, hit me up. Hit me up on Twitter with it, The Danny Cage. Because I'm curious. I just, you know, thinking off the top of my head of different baby faces right now. Or even in the past that have really stuck. I mean, there's Ricky Steamboat. I mean, everyone knows that one about him, you know, being a baby face pretty much his entire... Well, he was a baby face his whole career. Um... But I can't really remember any that have been baby faces from Jump and uh, really got over and stayed that way. I mean, you look at Bret Hart. Uh, he was a heel. Stone Cold, he was a heel. The Rock, he went baby face heel, you know, back to baby face. Shawn Michaels, even Hulk Hogan. So you have all these people. Uh, you know, they. it'd be like a video game. Or even in real life, I mean, these different characters and and stuff in movies. You got all these different characters, and then there's just, like, the generic cop that's supposed to stop them. And that's what it seems like it's like. It's like, we're going to take these heels, and the way we're going to have the baby face uh, get over is we're just going to say the baby face is here to stop the heels. So now you're just like this generic cop out to arrest these cool criminals doing these awesome things and having these badass catchphrases. So naturally, uh, people are going to start to uh, be more uh, attracted to the heels. So I think what we need now is we need baby faces. And I always say this, and people at the wrestling school get sick of hearing it, but I'm going to tell you in case you haven't heard it before. You cannot have a Spider-Man if you do not have a Peter Parker. You know, that w- what's great about... Batman, as you know, his backstory. Same with Superman. I mean, every superhero. The superhero movie would not be great if it was just, you know, Spider-Man is Spider-Man beating everybody up. Batman is Batman just beating everybody up. You need that interaction. You need that backstory. You need that internal struggle. You need to know what makes that person tick. Not just, I'm here to stop said crime or said bad thing or, you know say your prayers, eat your vitamins, be true to yourself, true to yourself, you know, all that hokey crap. So I think what we need is, and I think that's why 
Drew McIntyre is really taking off now is because they're bringing out his story and all that stuff. And I think they almost jacked it up a little bit because then they, they tried to make him too cute. You know, Seth Rollins was this dastardly heel, and I got, he was a red-hot heel when he turned on the shield and went with Triple H and then that injury and then came back as a baby. But then, like, he became too cute, and then they put him with Becky, and then it got even more too cute. They tried to hit on this thing, and then it just became not organic. And I almost saw that happen a little bit with Drew. Everybody wanted to love Drew. And then when he did that to Brock, I mean, the play, the, you know, the place went banana. And then they went and they put him on TV and he started like with one liners and just waiting. And, you know, it wasn't badass Drew again. Uh, and they tried to do something with the sexy Scotsman and all that stuff. Like, just let Drew be Drew, man. Like, fans aren't stupid. The people aren't stupid. Give them that backstory about his struggle, all that stuff, what he did. I think that was really uh, smart to do. And I haven't seen the latest little thing they did with him training. But, I mean, it looked badass with him with the barrels on him. I mean, <laughs> I popped that he was in his uh, in his uh, damn trunks. Uh, that made me giggle, uh, to say the least. Uh, but it's a good look, man. Uh, you know, he just looked like... Uh, you know, like a, a goddamn superhero. And I think that's what we need more of. And I think it's good that we got that backstory. And I think now that everybody has this time off, you know, write your backstory. Um, say where your, uh, where your character would live, uh, what he would drive, what motivates him. Uh, and baby faces, like your backstory could be something as simple as, uh, you came from an abused home and uh, you don't want to see anybody else abused. I just got done helping my daughter uh, with a paper on The Outsiders and I was going through the character stuff and and she was struggling with certain things and I was trying to explain to her why Johnny was the way he was, why Darry was the way he was. Uh, you know, Darry, you know, was 20 years old, forced to grow up, take care of his brothers, uh, you know, this and that. And that's why he's hard on them. And Johnny, you know, always looks out for people and will even speak up when he's so timid and terrified uh, living at home. And it's because he lives at home and he's got abusive parents and he never has the courage to stand up to them. So he stands up for others. So, like, you can do that with people today and not have to spell it out for them. You know, it could just be as simple as an interview. That's why I thought it was great. Like, that's why the Mankind character really took off. Uh, when he did that interview with uh, Jim Ross and he talked about, you know, you know, mom, baby, mama Foley, uh, Mick Foley's baby, you know, all that stuff. And uh, sorry for uh, stumbling over those words. I'm just watching somebody not turn on a green light uh, and almost cause an accident. Uh, come on, guys. This, these people act like they're landing a plane they're turning uh, so I think that's why the uh, that character works so much is you got to see the backstory and uh, you know I tried to do the same thing we had a character called War and I wanted him to be everything that's ugly in War kind of like how Mankind is like everything ugly in Mankind well I tried to do the same thing with the character War and uh, he started off as a heel and eventually I was going to turn a baby by him explaining you know, all the awful things in war and why war is bad and we shouldn't have wars. Uh, but, you know, we never did that transition. Uh, little side note there, uh, I actually gave that character to LSG from Ring of Honor to help him sell uh, and be more uh, animated in his selling uh, because he wasn't animated enough uh, for my liking, I thought. So we, uh, that's why we did that with his character. And it helped him tremendously, and it helped him get out of his shell. Uh, and I'm glad he was open to it. Because, um, you know, like, he didn't have to. But I just said, hey, I got this character war. This is what I want to do with it. And it was good. And then, uh, you know, there was that. So I just think that uh, characters in pro wrestling, uh, we need better development than just, hey, here's a good guy here to stop a bad guy. 
because the bad guys are usually going to get liked because they're, you know, they're bad guys and they, they do, uh, off the cuff things. Uh, but I just think we need to get to the point of, uh, a clear line. I know that Vince and others like to say, well, there's no good guys. There's no bad guys. Well, there, there is because granted some bad guys, uh, do good things. I look at sons of anarchy and the character clay. He was the most awful man in the world. But you still felt bad for him when his uh, wife uh, was raped and all that stuff happened. Uh, and you wanted to see him get revenge. But then later you wanted to see a bullet put in his head. Um, but again, at the, at the core of it, he is a heel. He is an awful human being. Uh, and you can still do that because, you know, just like they say, you know, Hitler liked to paint and he was nice to animals. It doesn't make him a baby face. So, uh, I point out, uh, you know, I had a character when I was writing in a movie just to show his human side. He was perfect family man. He was perfect everything. Uh, but he had an alcohol problem and he would be at traffic and, uh, sometimes he would, uh, duck down and take a sip of a bottle just to show that human side, just to show that he is flawed and he is not perfect. And that's what people need to see. Uh, I'm not saying you need an alcohol character in pro wrestling right now, especially in this environment. But um, you get my point, hopefully. Uh, so I just think we need more backstory for baby faces uh, because they're already going to like the heels because they do badass things. But you can show the human side of uh, baby faces, and there can be that that fine line of, hey, he might do some things. That are bad. I mean, I always point out, uh, Hulk Hogan wrestled as a heel. Uh, he would attack you uh, with the shirt, uh, rake your back, rake your eyes, uh, all kinds of stuff. I'm just going to take a sip of my Red Bull here. He would do all kinds of stuff like that. But you wanted to see him do that because he was always against the odds with all these big bad monsters coming at him. And he's usually always alone. Uh, until they bought in the Hillbilly Jim character to jump the guardrail and to do this and that. Uh, you know, and then later on, Orndorff went babyface and then did the turn. You know, Randy Savage did the turn. But, again, you wanted to see Hulk Hogan cheat to, to get back at these guys. So it's okay to do that. You know, you fight fire with fire. Um, so I just think that's what we need a little bit more of is, is, is backstory and just uh, not people doing cool things. And I always talk about uh, heels. So many heels want to be funny, want to be cute. But this is what MJF is running into right now. Is he is fu he's, he's going to get to the point where he's going to be too funny and too cute. And once you get the fans laughing at you, or laughing at you, meaning laughing with you, meaning you're telling them a joke and they're getting the punchline, uh you're going to be a baby face because there's no baby face. There's no comedians I know that get laughs and everyone's like, oh man, he's hilarious. I hate him. So you need to watch that. Only thing that's helping him out right now is Cody is such the baby face because Cody is the face of the company and comes off. And I'm going to say comes off because I don't know him. I just know what I see on TV comes off as so genuine and has so much heart and passion into this. And seems so real that by default, you know, they're going to boo MJF. But I think if MJF is doing this against anybody else, uh, he, he's probably getting cheered. And laughed, you know, people are going to laugh at his jokes and stuff. Um, and he's being very smug and that's good. And he's got that face uh, you want to punch. But again, he's running to that time where it's going to get so cute. And so funny that it's going to take that transition. It's not a bad thing if that's what they want to do. But if you want to be a true heel and stay that way, uh, you have to watch the cutesy stuff. And what I loved about Bobby Heenan and what MJF is actually doing now is kind of the model of Bobby Heenan. He'll be cute. He'll be funny. He'll get the last. But at the same time, uh, he's going to slip on the banana peel, look like an ass, and make himself look stupid. Uh, we saw it with him with the Arn Anderson, Arn Anderson thing, and then get slammed into the cage, stuff like that. I think that's good. Uh, but again, there's only so many times you can go to that well and take that drink until the people start to catch on and start to laugh. I, I, I point to Santino Morella 
And I'm not saying he's the same kind of character, but when Santino was a heel, people hated him. But then he started to do uh, overselling, uh, started to be very comical in an accent he was doing. Uh, it got him so over that he was by default a babyface. And that's when he bought out the Cobra Note, which was hilarious. You know, and he made a lot of money that way. <clears throat> so I just think this think right now is we need more character development and we need heels to be heels and not try to be funny, not try to be cute, not try to job out the ref. I always say this, and again, people are going to get sick of hearing me say this, but a serial killer is still afraid of the cops. There's a reason they hide what they're doing and tease it a little bit anonymously uh, if they want to do that. It's because they're afraid of the cops. They're afraid to get caught. It doesn't mean anything if, uh, you know, wrestlers are, are jobbing out the ref and, and stuff like that, not afraid of the baby faces. So uh, with that said, uh, I want to go into pro wrestling TV show versus pro wrestling sport. And I think this is an interesting time right now. Uh, one of my old, old radio shows, you could find it. Uh, I think it's Monster Factory Radio. I might have recorded it in 2012 or 13. Um, and it was Kayfabe is Dead in Pro Wrestling, I believe it is. But I uh, recorded that, you know, seven, eight years ago. And I basically said this is the way pro wrestling should be. It should be a TV show. And I think right now we're at an interesting time where pro wrestling is going to reinvent itself and I'm always for making the best out of crappy situations uh, and I think right now is that crappy situation where we don't have live crowds we don't have this we don't have that so we have to make it a little bit better and what I would have done uh, from jump because I did it at the Monster Factory when we did Factory Fridays because we wouldn't have that many fans there is I would play music in the background um, just to uh make it so it's not so quiet uh i don't mean fun uh, i don't mean pumping fake crowd noise and stuff like that and and like the laugh track and clap clap track but i or applause track I, I mean like um i would pump in music and if i was somebody like wwe and aew uh and and, and if this shut down lasts for a long time i would uh I would work with different bands or indie bands and to broaden my horizons and get my fan base out there more is I would reach out to these different bands and stuff and have them kind of uh, sign on these people to use their songs and you could put it in the bottom corner of, you know, this is such and such while it's playing and make that match almost as a music video and then transition to another song and another song. And I would also have songs playing to commercial um you know that's what i loved about nfl is they kind of made the transition from this isn't a sport this is a tv show like they literally have tv breaks they literally will play music going to commercial so you know it's a commercial same with basketball baseball everything so now you like but pro wrestling for some reason hasn't got onto that yet and it, it's kind of weird especially because they know they're a TV show. And there's the, the you know, the, the old guard that thinks it's um, a sport, but it, I like it as a TV show. And I like the, right now that they did the cut scene with Corbin and Elias and stuff like that. And that's the stuff that I talked about in my podcast that they had to do more of. Uh, and I was excited to see, well, like when Matt Hardy did it, everyone panned it and said it was horrible with the compound. And I said, nope, this is going to get over. This is... Uh, brand new this is great stuff and you'll see and sure as hell it did and i think if wwe would have found a way to figure that out and to use it uh it would have benefited everybody and i think you're going to see it come to the forefront at aew um because like and people might say like oh aew there's taking old wwe talent and blah 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 yeah but if you're taking the old talent and making it better and getting ratings with that old talent, well, then who's the fool? The, the, the fool that got this older talent uh, and made it more money off of them or the one that squandered it and didn't? 
because they couldn't see the potential. And I think that's what's uh, really good right now. Uh, the stuff that Jericho's doing, I love. Uh, I don't think, I said it the other day, I don't think anybody could have cut that promo on a freaking drone and got it over like he did. But it was unbelievable. I loved it. Uh, top to bottom. And even the teleportation, hilarious. Loved it. Top to bottom. Like I said, the cutscene. The only cutscene I ever hated uh, when they did it was The Rock uh, with the forklift. And the reason I do that is because it wasn't... Um, it was introduced and it wasn't the same as everything else. So it sticks out. Um, like, for example, um, the show uh, Three's Company. Uh, this is for RJ City out there. For Three's Company... When Mr. Furley used to talk to the camera and stuff, that worked. And he would smile at the camera when he told, like, a joke and all, kind of like saying, like, hey, you in on it? That worked, and it was, like, it was just him who did it, and it worked. But this, the, the whole thing with the uh, forklift going down on him, it didn't fit because it, it wasn't the same way all the way around, if that makes sense. I'm trying, I'm losing the the track of this because I'm sitting in the parking lot right now because I'm I, this is the only way I get some quiet because uh, I got three girls at home well two girls at home and my wife and uh, everybody's running around and doing stuff and you know my kids are 12 and 10 and they're going stir crazy so this is my silence uh, interesting fact that when I did the Austin podcast uh, I did it like eight o'clock at night and freezing cold uh, and basically five minutes notice and he called me up and he just said Hey, ever think about doing my show? And I was like, yeah, man, when is that? Like right now? And I was like, all right, I'll call you in a couple. And just called me up and uh, we went out in the, uh, out my car and recorded the podcast with no idea what we were going to talk about, what we were going to do, and just uh, calling it in the ring. That's basically what I'm doing right now. I'm just calling it in the ring, trying to kill time, uh, getting... Uh, the essentials for the family and I actually came to a store and it's closed so I'm sitting in the parking lot uh, and there's people around me and they're watching me uh, looks like I'm just talking to myself because uh, I got like the wireless uh, mic on and it's uh, pretty funny because they're watching me so there's that but yeah uh, I just think we, we need to transition more into TV show um, I always point out you know the entrance music works I couldn't imagine Darth Vader coming on the scene, excuse me, and not having that music, you know, the March of the Empire and all that stuff. And that's what I like about pro wrestling. We have those entrance music and stuff. But I think we need better uh, cutscenes, transitions. And now that no live studio audience and all that stuff, and that's what it is. It's a live studio audience. Simple as that. We should stop saying crowd and all. Live studio audience. Um, since now it's an empty arena and you can film cutscenes and all, you should do that. And what I would have done if I was the WWE, right when they figured out they couldn't have live shows anymore, I'd have put all those other rings up all around. Because what they're doing there is if they have all that around, you're not seeing the empty seats. And then what you're doing is now you're getting into the, the, the spot where you can film different matches in different spots. You could have multiple hard cams set up. Plus, you could put into mix those different rings. And you could even take it to the, the foam ring and do crazy stuff in there and not have to hurt yourself. And I think it, it, that would add to it. Um, so there's just so many possibilities, especially with uh, WWE right now. I think they're not taking full advantage of it. And I think that's why... AEW is kicking the crap out of them. AEW sees it as, hey, we're new at this. We don't have a set formula. Let's try this. Let's do this. WWE is, hey, we have this set formula. Let's stick with it. You can't do that. You have to change everything. For example, the, the, the Monster Factory. And, and that's why I said, like, you have to take advantage of a situation like this. Uh, something bad happens, you have to tw twist it, switch it, and make it better. You have to not look at it as, oh, what was me? You have to step up and change things. 
and that's what I wound up doing to Monster Factory. Uh, everyone knows the green lights and all that stuff around us. Only reason those are up is a transformer was hit uh, behind our building by lightning a week or so earlier than we had a show. And every once in a while, the lights would go out. And what was happening is as soon as we would plug in too much, the transformer would trip and our lights would go out and emergency lights would go on. And we had a show the next day. And I'll be damned if I'm going to miss a show. I hate that because we can get through this. So what I did was I bought a string of lights from uh, Home Depot, put bulbs in them, regular bulbs. And they're basically work lights for a work site when you don't have electricity for like a basement or something. Strung them along the, the ceiling. And what I did was I bought a 100-foot cord, and I was going to run that extension cord up, down, and around to a building on our property that isn't fed off of that transformer, and that was going to feed us our lights. Well, we stayed up till almost 2.30 in the morning running all that stuff, and around 3 in the morning, a uh, power company came out, replaced the transformer, and those lights were useless. And then one time I was at Home Depot, and I saw green lights. And I said, well, damn, I got those things hanging there. Let me put green light bulbs in it. Kill the lights, see how that looks. Boom. They, they got that mood and our branding. And it was all because I wouldn't be defeated and I switched up things. I didn't pack things in. I didn't stick with the same formula. And that's what the problem is right now, I think, with WWE is they're sticking with the same formula. Um, you have to change it. And right now is a key time for them to change it. And I would love to to, to talk to them and to, to man, because, like, when, when I got injured, I was... Uh, I, I needed a creative outlet, and I knew I would never get a job with WWE writing if I didn't have any experience. So I began script writing, then I began writing for comedians and stuff. Um, and then I wound up uh, buying the Monster Factory, and, you know, so that was different. But I wound up trying something different. So, like, I'm familiar with cutscenes and uh, filming and different things like that, and I just think they could do so much right now. And I know they got a great team there. But what they need to do is, like, trust that team to do different things. And uh, that's it, man. I just, uh, if they're going to do that thing that they did with the camera, you know, that everyone calls it the Kevin Dunn effect with the camera going in and out, in and out, in and out when someone's being attacked. If they're going to be as bold as try to do something like that, they have to change up other things. Uh, and I love people laughing about them doing that. But guess what? Uh, it works. It, it kind of does. Uh, sometimes it's too much. And sometimes uh, it takes away from it, but uh, I like it a little bit. And uh, I just think right now with this climate and what's going on right now, you're, you're missing a key opportunity to actually film this as a TV show. When it goes to commercials, there should be music, something branding to know, okay, this is your cue to either fast forward through this commercial if you DVR'd it or head to the bathroom, go get something because come back. And then when you hear that music again, it means we're going, you know. And, and and NFL does it, and everybody does it, so don't crap on it. NFL, you know, like I said, there's literally the wrestle, blow the whistle. It's a TV timeout. Um, so you can do the same thing with pro wrestling, uh, especially now uh, with it being uh, taped. Uh, tape it as a TV show and cut scenes and backstory, and you could have things filmed off scene. It doesn't all have to take place at different spots at the performance center. There's literally tons and tons of places in that area. Um, so that's it, man. Uh, like I said, I like to keep this to a half hour and we're almost at a half hour. Hopefully that answered your questions, got the ball rolling on some things, got your creative juices going. Uh, my name is Danny Cage. Follow me on the Danny Cage, follow the Monster Factory app for Monster Factory. I'm also running a deal right now. Uh, details on the Danny Cage Twitter. But basically, I've got, uh, you send me a match, I critique it, try to keep it to a match 10 minutes or less, because uh, some people have sent me half-hour matches, and it's really screwing up the other ones getting looked at, because basically, I look at matches multiple times, in case I miss something, uh, I like to hear crowd reaction, stuff like that. So, if I they got a half-hour match, it's taken me almost two hours to watch it. Uh, and to write notes and to type those notes up and send it to you with a critique and a message. Uh, so basically, you send me your match. You don't have to send a donation. Just send me your match. Uh, I'll send you the pay PayPal. If you'd like to make a donation, cool. But everybody that makes a donation will get a free week of training at the World Famous Monster Factory once this all clears up. 
come on by, come train with us, come work out with us, uh, and possibly get booked on one of our shows. Uh, and it's a chance to learn uh, from new people. You never know who's going to pop in. Homicide always comes in. Ricky Reyes comes in. Uh, there's a myriad of people that come in. LSG from Ring of Honor. Uh, you know, Damian Priest is in the area. He'll stop in. So, uh, Steve Cutler comes by. You never know. Uh, maybe Bro will stop by one time, but you never know. Uh, and I just think it's a really great uh, way to help everybody. And it helps uh, the Monster Factory get a payday because right now, we have no revenue coming in. Um, I have contracts with our talent uh, for tuition and stuff, and I told all of them not to worry about it, not to pay it, and we'll deal with that stuff later. Uh, I'm lucky that the people that own our building uh, told me I can hold off on April's rent, but I don't know how long I'm going to be able to hold off on that. Uh, plus, I have utilities to pay there, uh, and you know those bills catch up, plus the bills at home. Um, so if you'd like to head to Danny Cage, the Danny Cage, see the details on that, or just email me your match right now at, at and, it, and it's monsterfactorytv at gmail.com. And after that, I'll look at it. I'll email you our PayPal, which is the number. Oh, if you guys want to just donate, that'd be great too. And I'll send you some swag your way. If you're just a fan, I can send you some pictures, uh, you know, different shirts and autograph them and stuff. It's the number four. It's four monster factory at gmail.com. That's our PayPal. Thank you so much, guys and girls. Uh, again, comment on my Twitter of who is a baby face, who started a baby face and has remained a baby face or started as a baby face, got over as a baby face for a long time. Cause I can't think of, uh, anybody right now off the top of my head. Like, I, for example, the shield came in his heels. All these people came in his heels. I can't remember anybody who's got over as a baby face and started as a baby face. So let me know, and uh, let's work on those backstories. Let's work on those promos. Let's stay healthy. Let's do some social distancing. Let's stop being idiots um, because this is real, and it can kill you, and it affects what you do affects others, just like anything in the world. Um, and this is like kind of like showing everybody that you, everything you do, that butterfly effect, everything you do affects somebody in some shape or form. So I love you guys. Thank you so much. And follow me at the Danny Cage and hit me up. Love you guys. Bye.